we're going to give you a full overview of Colenio Batuto and Colenio Trotto and play some examples for you in doing so. Let's get started. So as you probably know, the string family of the orchestra plays their instruments by gliding or bouncing the hairs of the bow across the strings of their given instrument. Well, what if you didn't use the hairs of the bow and instead use the wood? This is what the technique colenio means, directly translated as with wood from Italian. There's two types of colenio, colenio trato and colenio battuto, which are both notated with a text marking above the step. Keep in mind that both of the techniques we're about to delve into can potentially be damaging to the instruments, so be sure to use them sparingly. Let's start with colenio trato, as it's much less commonly used and deserves a lot more appreciation. Colenio trato is when a string player glides the wood of the bow across the strings instead of the hairs. The resulting timbre is a really soft, somewhat gritty sound. It can really create an ominous mood. Like in Anton Webern's four pieces for violin and piano. Let's listen. This is a great performance example in regards to intonation with this technique, since it very easily can fall in and out of being devoid of pitch. One quick fix for when too much of the pitch is devoid is to have the player split 50-50 between the hairs of the bow and the wood. The second and more commonly used form of colenio is colenio battuto, which involves bouncing the top of the wood of the bow off of the strings. It actually dates back as early as 1605 in Tobias Hume's Hark Hark but has been used much more as time has gone on. The resulting timbre from this is quite unlike that of Colenio Trotto. It can be compared to wooden raindrops when written for a section. The striking of the bow creates a clicking type noise, which fluctuates in depth and fullness depending on where you strike the bow in relation to the fingerboard and the bridge. The closer to the fingerboard, the thinner the sound becomes, not in terms of dynamics, but in terms of envelope. Overall, the resulting sound won't be too loud dynamically unless a great deal of force is used, but that shouldn't be the case as to not damage the instrument. Let's take a look at Mahler's Fourth Symphony, Movement 1, to show its use outside of a new music context. As you probably can hear by listening to the background, it's slightly different than if Mahler were to have just written in staccato passages. Significantly less of the pitch is present here, and the wood against string impact is much more profound instead. This makes the technique more percussive than anything else. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you've learned anything today, be sure to hit subscribe and tap on that bell icon for more music theory and composition tips in the future. Until then, I'll see you next time.